Well, I'm joined now by Israel's ambassador to the UK, Zippy Hotovli. Uh, ambassador, thank you for coming in. It's, I mean, it's heartbreaking. It is. Just to hear one mother, I mean, and there are so many, there are hundreds and hundreds of... Just 199 yeah. of the people are now kept hostage in Gaza, and I'm thinking about young children, thinking about uh, a girl that has autism mm. and she's disabled. Mm. I'm thinking about Holocaust survivors. I think we, we've we never experienced anything like that as the Israeli people. We experience wars, we experience terror attacks, never in since Israel was established, we experienced anything that was as barbaric as this human, as... Where were you when you heard what I, happened? I was in Israel. I was uh, staying at my parents-in-law's house and six o'clock in the morning when the first alarm came, we woke up and I think it was 8.30 when the second alarm came in a small city next to Tel Aviv. And I told my husband, this is serious. And, and from an instinct feeling because of the sirens going up and down, I had a feeling something really bad came up and I turned uh, my phone uh, on Shabbat and, and I, I realized this is a war. And I want to tell to everyone who listens and follows Israel for many years, I think we never had such a clear event that every country should protect its people. I mean, you said it in, mm. in your great opening, and, and I want to echo that. This is one of those moments in a nation's life that a country cannot carry on without providing the very basic obligation that every country has to its people. We need to protect our children. We are out there in Gaza, not in order to revenge, not in order to punish. I don't agree with any of those I mean, definitions. It is, part, it is partly that, though. Let me just it? say why we're doing that. Mm. We're doing that to make sure that my children, my friends' children, mm. and every child in Israel will be protected. After we've seen what happened to our border, after we've seen what those barbaric terrorists from Hamas came in and they beheaded babies' heads. I mean, mm. the fact that those, those small babies, you know, we saw in the Telegraph, wrapped in uh, mm. those bandages. I mean, th this is something that breaks the heart of every parent. And you cannot see that. And the horrific photographs and everything documented by Hamas, the fact they put children together and burned them alive, mm. the fact they wanted to choke people in their homes by putting them on fire, those type of barbaric actions, and, and I'll, I'll tell you more than that, uh, after identifying, unfortunately, 1,300 Israelis that were brutally murdered, the people were recognizing the bodies. They said 80% of the bodies being tortured. And our president just exposed a booklet that basically showed that it was part of their you know, way of action, that they wanted to torture the people. It was part of their terror actions, uh, raping innocent young women, uh, you know, taking hostage a Holocaust survivor. I mean, this is really... I, I saw the footage of that woman who'd survived the Holocaust being yes. taken away. And all I was struck by was she was completely calm. She was staring ahead and she wasn't giving them a, a second of, but, of her own feelings in that moment. I thought that was just extraordinary, given what she had obviously gone through as a young person. But, but let's join uh, all the international community, including Prime Minister Sunak mm. today in Parliament, that said all those people kept in hostage must be released yes. now. And I think this is Israel's demand, and this is one of the aims of this war, is to bring them back home. No, I agree. 199 And people. let's also not be afraid, as the BBC is seemingly afraid to do, to call this what it is, an act of terror. These are terrorists. Uh, what I do think you feel? We, were, we were very vocal about what well, we what do you, think What do you feel it? about the BBC refusing to call them terrorists? Um, so I think if the BBC stands for accuracy and if the BBC stands for um, the mm. truth, it's very simple. I mean, this is what terrorism is, mm. and you cannot find any better example no. of terrorism. So I, I really think everyone should call it by its name and its terrorism. And, and I think one more thing we need to, to say uh, at this time, because Israel is now in one of its, uh, I would say this is not an existential threat, mm. but this is a war on existence, mm. because we cannot exist if our children cannot be safe in their homes. You, so Israel, uh, Israel has decided, and people will absolutely understand this, that Hamas has got to be eradicated in the way that ISIS was eradicated. But ISIS was eradicated in a process that also involved a lot of innocent people getting killed on the way. Clearly, in what is coming now in Gaza, a lot of innocent people on the Palestinian side are going to die as well.
how many is too many? And I don't have the number. I just talk about this debate about proportionality. I'm struggling to see what is proportionate that meets the scale of what happened last weekend. Let me make that clear. I don't have the answer here. But there's a fine line that Israel is going to tread between doing what it can to get the hostages out, paying back, revenge, retaliation, whatever you want to call it for defense. what has happened. I call it defence. I okay. call it protecting defense. I mean, I, I, whatever you call it, obviously that's part of the motivation too. Uh, and ultimately you want to get rid of Hamas. But Hamas are embedded with civilians, we know this. So the civilian death toll is going to be very high. And the question for the international community is at what point does the high moral ground, which I think Israel has at the moment, because of the scale of what happened last weekend, at what point could you risk losing that? So, first of all, Israel is a moral country, works according to the international law, and according to the international law, we are allowing all the Palestinians to go to the south area of Gaza in order to make sure they'll be safe, including creating shelters for them with the international community organizations to make sure they will be safe. The only but the, thing... But the water, let me ask you on this, sir. Just, just one side. Let me, let yeah, me just yeah. finish. The only thing that stands as a barrier from those Palestinians mm. to get into a safe place is the fact that Hamas is preventing from its own population to get to a safer place because it doesn't care about its people. Mm. He's using international support, not in order to give them, as you said, mm. water and electricity, but actually in order to fire on Israel. And as we speak, you know, everyone mm. is talking about this horrific massacre, but sometimes we forget that fighting from Hamas carries on. As we speak today, parliament being evacuated, the center of Israel being bombarded by, by those rockets. And we keep having over 6,000 rockets just in the last week. So think about it. It needs to have electricity and all those manufacturing. Mm. What do you think supports that? So it's Hamas basically taking from its own population and using it against but innocent Israelis. I heard, I heard so you. Okay. Blame Hamas. I hear you. Blame I hear, Hamas. I hear you. But I also heard you this morning saying there's no humanitarian crisis here by any definition of a humanitarian let crisis. Let me explain that. That okay. is happening. I mean, you may apportion blame to Hamas on your side. Let, let, let me explain I don't think statement. you can deny there's a humanitarian crisis. Let me explain that. I'm a woman. I'm a mother. Mm. I have a sympathy to any innocent child, any innocent person in mm. the world. We don't want to harm any innocent people. We want to target the militants. We want to target those terrorists. We want to target the facilities, mm. the capabilities. This is what we want to do. And the reason I said that, because at the moment, in Gaza, you have supplies of water, you have supplies of food, and unfortunately... Wait is, a second, is, some of it being Some abused. say the water has run out in many areas. And I want to explain why. 90% of the water in Gaza are not is not supplied by Israel. This is like a myth. Uh, Gaza is... Israel has just 10% of this. 90% uh, of it is based on their aquifers, and they're doing that by using um, uh, machines. And the machines, basically, in the electricity, they're being abused at the moment by Hamas in order to fire my own hometown. I understand and this, this is what happens. So I understand just, just think how irrational it is that the international community, knowing that Hamas started this war, is blaming Israel for what it didn't start it. I'm not blaming but, Israel. No, no, okay. all I'm saying is... I, I, I understand the scale of what happened last weekend means that there must be an unprecedented response. Exactly. I think any country in the world that suffered what Israel suffered last weekend would launch an unprecedented response. I understand that. But I also st understand in my modern history that after 9-11, America launched a series of unprecedented responses. It invaded Iraq, which I felt at the time was an illegal invasion. That caused ISIS to grow in huge amounts of power and then kill many, many people. Uh, Afghanistan was a huge mess and continues to be a mess and is now back in the hands of the Taliban and so on. There's not a lot of evidence that a big invasion of a place like Gaza will do anything other than potentially make the situation worse. That's my concern. So can, can I give you uh, my answer? Life is about choosing between, between alternatives. Uh, if you have a perfect alternative, you would have gone for the perfect alternative. But going back even for British history, I mean, you don't want to go back to mm. American history by attacking Mosul and killing so many civilians. And I, I personally think uh, fighting ISIS is a justified cause mm. because ISIS didn't do any good uh, for, no, for, for civil, civil society. And, and going back to your own history, when you fight Nazi Germany, mm. you knew that there were many, many civilians got attacked from your attacks on mm. German cities. Dresden was a symbol, but you attacked Hamburg, you attacked other cities, and altogether it was over 600,000 civilian Germans that got killed. And was it worth it in order to defeat Nazi Germany? And the answer was yes. Let me ask you uh, this. Let me ask, just to, just let, to finish, 
My point is we don't target civilians. Mm. We definitely give them an alternative and a place to find a shelter. And we are trying to minimize casualties because our target is just to remove Hamas from our border I understand. in order to have my children to I sleep understand that. peace and quiet in their bedroom. I understand, but it is also true that nearly three times as many Palestinians have died in the last week than were killed in the outrage on October the 7th. And then that number is going to go much, so much higher. This is exactly why I think it's unmoral equivalence, because those people mm. got killed in Israel, children, women and men, mm. were virtually targeted and murdered in the most barbaric well, I, agree, I agree with you. No, no, but the people got caught in a crossfire mm. in Gaza are people we didn't want to kill. Some of them are terrorists. You need to remember that. And we are targeting those mm cruel people that are based in schools, based in hospitals, and according, by the way, to the international law, Israel is allowed to launch a military attack every time there is a place that is, puts Israelis in danger, which it is. The facilities of Hamas are based in civilian but facilities. Do you feel, you talked about being a, a, a mother, a parent, do you feel on a personal level genuine sympathy with the innocent Palestinians who are getting caught up in Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I mean, my, my thoughts are to every single individual that is caught in a war zone. Now, but, but, but you need to understand, every country has first and foremost responsibility mm. to its own people. So if Israel will fail to defend my children and other people's children, like we've seen those parents that had to, you know, be in a shelter, hearing other, uh, like, I will never forget this video, that you hear parents that hear one of their children get executed. Mm. I mean, this is, those are Things, those are things that are totally horrific. Mm. So when this is the reality, you need to understand there was a, a misconcept of, of the understanding that Hamas can be a target, can live by you. No, this tiger, it, it, it went out of, of mm. the cage and it did what it did. And it's a barbaric How action. How do we get to peace after this? So that's a great question. I think um, you cannot have peace. I mean, th this, again, going back to your history, you cannot uh, have any type of negotiation with this type of mm. barbarism that is based on jihadi ideology. Hamas Charter is calling to annihilation yeah, of Israel is. and total destruction. So it, it, it has no political vision. So we need to have, uh, from the other side, we need to have people who want to live peacefully with Israel. We've seen the Arab world uh, opens the gate to Israel. Mm. We've seen the Abraham Accords. We've seen Saudi wants to uh, normalize with Israel. I believe the future can be better without terror organizations. And this is why Israel is fighting this war, by the way, for the West as well. This is not just Israel's fight. This is the Western world's fight. Just like you had your attacks in 7-7, the Manchester arena. It's the same type of ideology that attacking innocent people. We need to fight it together. It is inarguable, finally, that before this attack, the plight of the Palestinian people in Gaza was completely unacceptable. Many will see the control that Israel has wielded in the last week is evidence that it's an unhealthy control over the people of Gaza and indeed potentially of the West Bank as well. My next guest will certainly be arguing that very strongly, that until what they see as the oppression of the Palestinian people is properly dealt with, that there will always be this kind of, I mean, you can call last weekend what you like, to me it's a disgusting abomination, but there will always be angry people in Palestine wanting to break out of what they see as oppression. What do you say to that? Um, let's just check the facts from 2000. And actually, actually, Gaza was the uh, case study mm -hmm. for how the world will look without Israeli control on Palestinian uh, area and territory. 2005, Israel withdraws to the international mm -hmm. border and people believe that Gaza will become a Middle East Singapore. And look what happens. So actually, it's the other way around. From 2000 to 2005, Israel doesn't have any settlements, doesn't have any territorial demands from the Palestinians. Instead of turning Gaza to a flourishing city, they took all the international support, and there was massive support, and they took it to, to build this underneath tunnel city that became a terror city, an evil city. But we saw the results and the, its ugly face on last Saturday But you wouldn't Israel. deny that the living conditions of people in the Gaza Strip, for example, have been completely unacceptable. And Pierce, who should we blame for that? Israel doesn't control the Gaza Strip but since, is there, since 2005. Is Israel, blame, is Israel blameless? I would say that Israel after... It's not two, blameless. I would say Israel... No country in the world is perfect. Mm. But after 2005, you need to blame the effective control of Hamas uh, that abused the population, that kept on using all the international support just for one cause, to harming 
innocent Israelis to fire all those rockets that have been fired on our cities for years by years. Mm -hmm. And this is where every civilized person should stand and to say, we saw the real face of Hamas on Saturday. They are there to kill innocent Jews in their beds. And we need to support Israel in this justified fight because Hamas is bad both to Israelis but also to Palestinians. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed for coming thank in. You very much. And just going back to what happened last weekend, it was horrific. And when I saw that the instant reaction on the streets of this capital city, London, were thousands of people out in the streets celebrating, some of them with Hamas flags, I was revolted that that was happening in my country. And the, the only correct response to what happened then was outrage. And it's been disgusting to watch people celebrating what happened to your people. So thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Well, that. thank you.